Welcome to The Green Room, a show about shows. Emily, Real Housewives, episode two. Wowie, wowie, zowie. Episode two, we start off <laughs> back at the party, Meredith's birthday party at Shaw Chalet. Whitney, I don't think a lot of people were at this party. Uh, okay, not that many people were like that. It's the same people over bobbed, blonde-haired, bobbed lady who she cuts a figure. She looks great. I would also love to know her entire backstory. If anyone knows her, let us know. She looks glam. Yeah. I have to uh, see if she's Mary's friend, Meredith's friend. <laughs> guy in the fedora. Stuart is wearing like a bishopric suit and tie. Looks uh-huh. great. They always... Do you notice that they always show that one waiter who's like very much like, I think he's the definition of dad bod. Yes, 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 yes. I was like, every single time we go to these low jeans, like there's another guy walking around and he looks strong, but here we are with dad bod waiter. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not mad. So I'm never whatever. mad. At, all bodies matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jen is upset in the bathroom, you know, because Mary has told her she smelled like hospital. Well, that happened a while ago. What's happening here is that Mary refuses to apologize to tell for telling Jen she smelled like hospital. She's actually doubling down, I'd say. She I'd say is. She, not only is she not apologizing, but she's like validating her, like justifying her words. Which and is Mary, so hilarious. Yeah, she keeps trying to explain it. Like, listen. I don't like the smell of hospitals. I'm like, okay, we know that. The problem is we've heard that it. you won't apologize for this. Yeah, I just like the whole thing is so hilarious. At one point, Heather's like, why are we still talking about this? And I was like, Shh, Heather, shut up. Let's always talk about this. Let's talk about this for the rest of the episode because they've never heard a more hilarious argument. My favorite part of this entire episode might have happened here where Jen's talking about how offensive it is. And she says, that's like saying... I wrote this oh my down. Gosh. Oh, you smell like a baby with cancer. <laughs> That's like seeing a baby with cancer and saying you smell, you like, smell cancer. like cancer. And it killed me because, hey, why you got to be a baby? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I was like, Jen, you made this so dark. Like, <laughs> it doesn't need to be a baby with cancer. It could have been anybody with cancer. But um, like, what does cancer smell like? Mary knows. I would love to um, point out Mary's outfit a little more because when she walked into that bathroom and we got to see Mary's outfit in full light, I paused because there is so much to unpack here. So Mary's in, uh-huh. I think it's a, I think it's a lovely, I think she said Chanel, runway Chanel, green tool dress. That dress on itself, great. It's pretty, good job. Mary has added to it fingerless black leather gloves, mm-hmm. which don't sleep on those because they're coming back every mm-hmm. episode. I, From what I can see, we're going to see those mm-hmm. fingerless black gloves every episode. Uh, very it. Dolly Parton. She's also wearing a purse with a scarf tied around the purse a lot of necklaces and then for me the real cherry on top of that whole outfit is her opaque white tights like Like she's a five-year-old yes yeah like like thick thick white tights yeah like what you put your kid in to walk to church in the (laughs) snow yeah like what you put like what in the 1950s your kids wore like it's not even like tech wear I don't get it I don't get it I don't get it. I will never understand why Mary doesn't have odor glands or why she puts those outfits together. I don't get it. And it honestly, I mean, it's kind of making me mad. <laughs> I just like, I think it's evidence that Mary has no girlfriends because no yeah. friend would let you wear that without being like, ooh, take those tights off. If she would have taken the tights off, would have dropped the fingerless gloves, the black bra under the sheer top. Mary's looking pretty okay. She's not great, but she's looking okay. Right now I'm like, this is just... Ooh, oh, Mary, I feel like white tights under a dress makes me so embarrassed to be from Utah. I don't know why, but it really, it really sing to me. This is like you put tights on because it's cold outside. <laughs> and that yeah. embarrasses me for all of us. All right. So there's the outfit. They're in a fight. They hug, whatever. They're back at it. But and like not 30 seconds later, we get another fight between oh, Lisa goodness. and Whitney. I can't wait to get your take on this. So what happens was they're talking and Lisa donated some Vita tequila. (laughs) She has to say Vita tequila 9,000 times per episode. Registered Registered trademark, Lisa. (laughs) 
<laughs> um, she donated enough Vita tequila for 500 people to Whitney Rose's vowel renewal mm-hmm. that we saw last at episode. daybreak outside a lovely uh, scene outside the daybreak man the daybreak man. lake yeah you and just stunning. <laughs> colonial you're like wait is this new england no it's daybreak <laughs> no it's uh, not. oh um, wait is this a beautiful track home no it's just still daybreak <laughs> This is a Toll Brothers special. Um, they're talking and Whitney's like, thank you so much for the tequila. By the way, your bartenders got super drunk and destroyed everything. And yeah. this doesn't go over well with Lisa. Lisa, well, the funniest part. dropped like an anchor in water. She says, you know, so they broke a bunch of glass. They took some whiskey and they took some top shelf tequila. And I- Lisa's like, record scratch my tequila is top shelf tequila and she's like oh yeah no for sure for sure and then from there lisa just kind of like is not willing to listen anymore to what's being said i will tell you a couple i went through such a range of emotions through that whole fight the first one was yeah whitney's fine to tell her that your bartenders were messy like if i was a business owner and i sent people to represent me i'd be like okay great it's hard to say i get that Whitney here, I was like, the way you, the voice you use to be confrontational, like you're a baby. She's a very mm-hmm. sexy baby. Mm-hmm. Um, is so to me aggressive. <laughs> like if someone <laughs> talks to me like that, I'm like, stop getting so aggressive at me. Do not use that voice on me. So I can see Lisa being mad, but then Lisa said some zingers that I was like, okay, Lisa, she, her, her quote of like, if I gave you a Chanel necklace and you choked on it, that's your choice. I was like, uh, okay. So you did give, I do think it sounds like she was generous. I also think it sounds like she knew Whitney Rose's wedding was being filmed for the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. So she gave her tequila. So her tequila would also be filmed for the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. So then she could later talk about her tequila being filmed on the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City while she was being filmed on the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. If you're coming back to me, I think that all Lisa cares about is her marketing, which get it, girl. Like, get your money. I'm happy for you. That Lisa... Ooh, if Whitney is dumb and delusional, Lisa's mean and delusional. <laughs> and honestly, I don't know which one's better because they're both so good. They are incredible. It's so just fun to watch. Incredible. I also love Lisa just stating, I was very generous with you. I wonder all the time, when could I use that? When could I say that to someone? Lisa's performance in this episode, like she is cunning, mm-hmm. conniving, mm-hmm. smart. Mm-hmm. I respect it so much. Lisa, this episode said these things that I'm like, oof, oh dang, those are the meanest things <laughs> that you could say. Last week she said, you know, I don't remember you, which is uh-huh. such a slap in the face. And then this week she told Whitney later, I don't care enough, <laughs> which I was like, eh, damn, that is such a bird. Like, it and is. they're not even, they're not mean things. She's not saying like you're an idiot. Like she's saying things that are like psychologically damaging (laughs) which is incredible i I respect it really so much like i don't like Um, Lisa, but i'm loving her then we get heather who's trying on her old ski gear she facetimes mayor and they're like hey let's let's all go skiing these people we've never spent time together as a group but let's (laughs) Let's all do something terrible together ski it's not long after this that whitney and heather meet at a ski shop and have Mm -hmm. a little convo little cousin meetup in which in which whitney reveals that lisa accused her of being a swinger does not deny it oh man it's hilarious but you know what's not hilarious what comes next (laughs) Meredith yeah. and Seth. Yeah. Ah, this is just a stone cold bummer is what this is. Love a bummer. I know. I was like, this is so level headed. It bums me out. Well, and he I, he's, ah, like, he's not nice to her. I don't know yeah, what the situation that, is. That, There's that like, it's so fascinating because I don't think she's nice to him. No, they're bad for each other. I feel like they bring out the worst in each other. There's some insinuation that she's cheating. Mm-hmm. He he thinks she's looking at her phone too much. She's like, I haven't looked at my phone all is. day. And he says, so your phone was playing the role of your husband, which like, come Oof. on, Seth. Like, yeah, don't be okay. that guy. 
I don't want to stick up for Seth because even last week, remember when I was like, don't bring up how much sex you have with your wife. I, and yeah. like almost to shame her on national TV. Like I was nine to him. And that comment is even more interesting now that we know they're separated. Okay, so then they all go skiing, and boy, oh boy, the outfits on these women are incredible. Mary is late because she was waiting for her Chanel coat to arrive, and she gives a rather lengthy monologue about how some ski clothes give you a wedgie, and she prefers the brands that don't give you a wedgie. That like brand Chanel. Being Chanel. Uh, so- uh, Jen looks incredible in a cheetah pink <laughs> onesie and big Black furry diamonds. gloves. She looks Black Diamond. They're going to think I'm on the Black Diamond because I look Black Diamond. She's Um, wealthy. So those three are on the bunny hill. Lisa as well are on the bunny hill. Lisa, Mary, and Jen. Jen reveals that she had a ski lesson the night before, which uh, is her rollerblading through her living room of her rental house while her assistants cheer her on. Why was that not a full half hour? Jen says, I thought we would be competing today. I wanted to win. Her ski instructor says, Jen, the thing is skiing is supposed to be fun. And she says, it's fun to win. Uh, I, Jen, here's what I love about Jen. And this is where Meredith really goes out, hits the mark, misses the mark. Jen knows who she is on this show. A, she knows she's on a show. She plays it up. She knows who she is on this show. She plays it up and she looks good every single time she does it. So this is to me like, Jen is a perfect housewife because of these reasons. Her thing is she's the MVP. Her her husband's the coach. She's competitive. That is her thing. And she's leaning into it. And I'm like, this is Meredith. Guess what? If your thing is like, you're separated, then make that your thing and like make it your storyline. But she doesn't do that, which is why I just think Jen is the best because Jen is the one person on the show who seems to realize she's on a show. Yeah. And she's so good at it. She's so um, good at it. Let's see. Meredith and Heather and Whitney get into a conversation and Whitney tells them about the time when Lisa told her <laughs> that her style was a little Utah. Oh my gosh. I love it. The, my favorite thing is that whole setup when Meredith's like, she just cares about you. And then they show this clip of her being like, Meredith, we need to style Whitney. And Whitney's like, what's wrong with my style? And then Lisa goes, it's a little Utah. Um, Then things get real hot, real hot. We we move past that 579 Charlotte Roos argument. And we Mm -hmm. move into a brand new argument at dinner. Which, Mm -hmm. thank heavens. Because this is what we're here for. Whitney tells Lisa that she feels judged by her. Uh, And Lisa's like, I'm trying to figure out why I make you feel judged. And she... Whitney says, well, you make me feel a little threatened. And she says, if you feel threatened, that's because you feel threatened. It's Mm -hmm. not because I threatened you, which again, this woman has been to therapy. So she's like, this is not my problem. She's smart. Uh, I love, like, this is like saying to someone, I'm sorry you feel that way. Like, to mm -hmm. me, it's like the ultimate burn. Like, that's how you feel, but that's not true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Whitney's like, hey, remember those rumors you said you were going to use about me? She doesn't use the word swinger, though, because she says if she uses the word swinger, she knows that the conversation will be turned into whether or not she's a swinger. Again, does not deny being a swinger. No, no, no. She just doesn't want people talking about it. No. Which, okay. All right. Lisa's like, okay, well, guess what? This is just what I've heard. I'm just telling you what I've heard as a friend. Like you told me about the crappy bartenders. I'm now telling you (laughs) I've heard you're a swinger. (laughs) And that's when she says, I don't judge you. I don't care enough to judge you. That freaking burn. I mean, call 911. You got third degree because that is such a good, solid. Nothing would make me feel worse about myself than that. Like they don't even care enough. I judge everyone. I go to the grocery store and I judge people. But the thing I had to keep reminding myself is these lady needs storylines or they're going to be like Jen this week, which was so unfortunate that we did not see more from Jen this week. Right. You don't have a storyline and someone's like calling you a swing, someone else a swinger. And that's also, I have suspicions. Part of the reason that Whitney doesn't want to drop the swinger thing is because it's her greatest storyline of the year. Oh yeah, for sure. You're going to get so much airtime with that. And I would, I don't, when she was like, let's just clean slate the swinger thing. I was like, "Mm -mm, girl, do not (laughs) clean slate this. (laughs) Don't clean slate it. Tell us about it. I mean, it was a good week. I think we had some real confrontation I was here for, but I'm just really disappointed. We didn't see more of Jen. You can find the Green Room on Spotify. We're also under the Hive Mind feed on all other podcast platforms. So find us there. Um, and we'll be back next week to talk more about the latest developments in the lives of these real housewives. Emily, as always, what a pleasure. 